uniform, between three and four millimeters thick, depending on the utensil. They feed the sheet through a press, manually. A die inside punches out utensil shapes, called blanks. Fork blanks go one by one into a piercing tool, which slices away three strips of metal. This creates four prongs, with a support bar across the top for now. Spoon blanks, meanwhile, go into a machine called the cross roller. It expands the spoon head sideways, thinning out the metal at the same time. Then it's into a clipping tool, which trims the spoon head to precisely the right size and shape. Both spoon and fork blanks now go into a machine that grinds their rough edges smooth by vibrating them against small plastic cones. Elsewhere in the factory, a specialized tradesman sculpts the steel die that'll stamp the pattern on the cutlery handles. Working from the designer's illustration, he has to interpret the pattern in three dimensions. This requires tremendous skill because the depth of the design varies from one point to the next. He measures these minute variations with a tool called a micrometer. In the press, the die does three things. It embosses the pattern, bends the handle to the final curve, and marks the back of the utensil with the manufacturer's name and the cutlery material. Now, back to the head of the utensils. The forks go into a press that bends the prongs to the right curve. Now that support bar can finally come off. Spoons, meanwhile, go into a press that contains what's called a bowling die. It strikes the spoon's flat head into a bowl shape. Now it can hold liquid. Every time you strike metal, it hardens a bit. So, repeatedly during the shaping process, workers have to heat the blanks to soften them again. Making knives is more complicated than making spoons and forks. The factory constructs the handle from two halves. After presses punch them out and stamp the pattern, a clipping machine removes excess metal around the perimeter. Now workers coat the edge with flux, a chemical cleaner. The surfaces have to be spotless to bond properly. They join two halves, then wrap them together with cotton string. Then they pour in powdered metal. It immediately sticks to the flux on the edges. They discard the excess, then run the handles through a mini furnace for 12 minutes. The 900 degrees Celsius heat liquefies the metal powder, soldering the two halves together. The string burns off in the process. After polishing, the solder line won't show. Workers pour cement into the middle of a centrifuge machine and load the hollow handles all around. As the machine spins, it fills each handle with cement. Now each handle gets a stainless steel blade. The blade's stem goes directly into the wet cement. A clamp holds the parts together for now. Next, they submerge the knives in hot water for 12 minutes. This cures the cement, making the handle blade connection rock solid and giving the handle weight. For worker safety, it's only now, near the end, that they sharpen the blades. Now for the big finish, a polished one. You can't help but take a shine to these beauties.